Hello everybody, nice to see you again. Some of you might still remember me from a previous video that I did that was about the uh, chromatography flash pump. Um, for those of you who don't know me or don't remember anymore, let me quickly introduce myself. So my name is Christian Führer. I work here at the Global Service uh, Support Department. My colleagues um, call me an old stager because I have been here now for almost 14 years. And that's why today I would like to continue sharing my experience with you. When we talk about chromatography systems, we usually focus mainly on the main um, components, like the UV detector or the pumps. And it is very important to think about those small little parts like fittings, the ferrules, the nuts, all of the tubings. So that's what I would like to focus on today. And um, also here, some of my colleagues, they actually make me very nervous because they also don't handle these parts properly. So I see very often people getting, using tools to over-tighten to over um, these nuts, and that is all not necessary. So I would like to show to you today exactly how to handle these parts, and then um, the best is that we have a look at this in the lab. So come with me so we can have a look at that. Now I would like to um, show you the main materials that are used on our flash and prep systems. Also the main difference between both of them, just for you to remember, on flash we have higher flow rates and lower pressures, and on the prep you typically have lower flow rates and higher pressures. That is also why, for example here on the flash system, you can see that all of the lines or the hoses, they are typically made out of FEP or ETFE. And the same is for the fittings, they are typically uh, made out of PEAK. If we then have a look here on the prep system, then you see straight away that all of the lines, so here the tubes, they are made out of stainless steel, where you have these higher pressures, and also the fittings or these nuts, they are also made out of steel. The same here, you also have peak lines and the connections, they are also made out of steel. Let me give you now some more detailed information about these small and important parts that we are talking about today. Here on the document, we can see actually what is the function of the whole fitting, the port and the hose, is that you are able to connect the hose to an inlet port and that everything is tight so you have no leaks. What you always have is either, as I mentioned, an FEP or ETFE hose or a tube. Then you typically have the nut, which can be of different materials, also then a ferrule. That has then got to be connected to the so-called port where you then tighten everything. Something about the hoses. The hoses we have then also in many different sizes and here we have just listed them in inches and also millimeters so you have an idea. I would just like to show you here an example. So of everything that we have and that you typically see also on the chromatography devices. The inlet hose is the thickest one so we talk always about the outer diameter. So this would be one quarter of an inch, approximately 6.3 millimeters, then one eighth inch, which is about 3.1 millimeters, and then also the one sixteenth inch, which is approximately 1.6 millimeters. Let's now have a closer look here at the fittings, which are available in several different sizes, materials, configurations. The main th uh, difference is you can see these four, they have the so-called knurled head, which is meant to be only tightened by hand, so no use of tools for tightening, and they are typically used on the flash system. Then we have this one here on the right, the stainless steel fitting, which has a hex head, and this requires an appropriate wrench 
for tightening. Then we have the ferrule here, which you can see. It's separate, and that means these are the two-piece fittings, and these ones, which already have the ferrule integrated in, in the, the head, these are the one-piece fittings. On the prep, you will always find the two-piece fittings. Another difference is these here have a flat bottom or cone-shaped. And then on the different hoses, when they are assembled, as you can see here, that's what it looks like when it's been properly assembled onto a hose. So the one, uh, the nut, and here the ferrule. These we just have in different configurations. As you can see, this is a bigger one, which is typically used for the solvent inlet. It has a thicker diameter, inner diameter. Or then as we can see here on the peak hose, so here you have the one piece fitting made out of peak with the cone shape. Or what you might also encounter is that you have here also on the same peak hose, you have then the stainless steel fitting with also the cone shaped ferrule. Let's now talk about hoses and tubings. The hose, as you can see, is typically made out of FEP or ETFE. It is for the flash systems and has a slighter, bigger inner diameter because of the higher flow rates. Then we have here the tube, which is typically made out of stainless steel, used for the prep systems and has a smaller inner diameter. Important for you to remember is that the inner diameter and the length of the hose or the tube have a direct impact on the back pressure and the dead volumes. So to avoid problems with, for example, wrong flow rates, high back pressures or air bubbles in the hoses and tubings, it's very important that these have been prepared correctly. And I would like to start by showing you here an example of a good and a bad connection. So here on the top, as we can see, this hose has not been cut straight. So here for sure you will have uh, leaks or air bubbles in the lines. The lower one, you can see the hose and the end of the fitting, they are flush. And that is how the hose and fitting should be assembled. To correct um, this kind of situation, you have to cut this bad piece of hose off using an appropriate cutter. Just fit it here into the cutter, press, and now you can see here you have a clean and straight cut. Then you have to install a new fitting. I usually just put it here on the hose and to make sure that everything is flush, I just push it then here against a clean and straight surface. That's what it looks like. As we have learned also before, you know that these knurl head fittings, they have to be hand tied. So I will show you what that means here using the solid loader. So you just have to screw the fitting into the port until you feel that it's reached the end. Make sure the hose is, um, stays in place. And then with just over half a turn, that should be enough to fix the hose here into the, the fitting and then everything will remain tight. We always say hand tight. I would like to show you also here an example. What happens if you over tighten the fittings? You can see here on top, the inner diameter of the hose has become smaller because it's been over tightened. And this will then also cause wrong flow rates or air bubbles in the lines. For the stainless steel tubings, um, if necessary, you can also cut this tube with an appropriate cutter. I just want to show you now here how to install this correctly. So the first thing is that you fit the hex head nut onto the tube and then the ferrule with the corners facing the port, as you can see here. Insert the tube then into the port until it reaches the end and you have to hold it in this position. Then the, the nut you have to tighten by hand to avoid damaging the threads. 
This is very easy. Hand tight. The tube is still loose, but you have to make sure that it's still completely inserted. Then using an appropriate wrench key, it's usually enough for you to do a quarter of a turn just to tighten it all. And now you can see here the tube doesn't even come out anymore. Loosen it so that then you can repeat the procedure here for the other side of the sample loop. And as you can see, the ferrule is now fixed here onto the tube. That's all. I hope now after watching this video, I will no longer be nervous because you will also understand the importance of these small parts which are very important for the chromatography system. In the text below um, the video you can find a link to the fact sheet which contains lots of details about everything we covered today in the video. I hope you find all of the information um, useful, that it will help you in your daily job and I wish you a nice day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.